told me that your name was Fontaine. No, my good lord, I have <laughs> Title of goddess and word late with addition, but fair soul, in your fine frame have love no quality. Music. If the quick fire of youth light not your mind, you are no maiden, but a monument. When you are dead, you should be such a one as you are now. For you are cold and stern, and now you should be as your mother was when your sweet self was gone. She then was honest. So should you be. Disaster of his setting in his thoughts. And what things you would hear have confessed? Nothing of me, have he? His confession is taken, and it shall be read to his face. If your lordship be in it, as I believe you are, you must have the patience to hear it. Plague upon him, muffled, he contained nothing of me. Hush, hush. With my thumb, for the cartel, He calls for the tortures, what will you say without them? I will confess what I know without constraint. If he pinch me like a patsy, I can say no more. Posco Chimorcho. Bob, you know, the merciful general, our general bids you answer what I shall ask you out of a note. And truly, as I hope to live. First, demand of him how many horse the duke is strong. What's it to that? Five or six thousand. But every weak and unserviceable, the troops are all scattered and for the commanders, very poor rogues. Upon my reputation and credits, as I hope to live. <laughs> Shall I set down your answer so? Do. I'll take the sacrament on it, and how which way you will. Oh, wonder him, what a path saving slave is this. You are deceived, my lord. This is Monto Fawun, the gallant militarist that was his own slave. I will never trust a man again for keeping his sword clean, nor believe he can have everything in him by wearing his apparel neatly. Uh, that set down. Five or six thousand horse, I said. I will say true, or thereabouts, set down, for I'll speak truth. He is very near the truth in this. But I con him no thanks for it, and the nature he delivers it. Poor rogues, I pray you say. Well, let's sit down. I humbly thank you, sir. A truce, a truth. Uh, the rogues are marvelous poor. Demand of him what strength they are afoot. What say you to that? By my troth, sir, if I were to live this present hour, I will tell truth. Let me see, Spirio, 150, Sebastian, so many, Corambus, so many, Jacques, so many, Giltitian, Cosmos, Ludovic, Grati, 250 each, my own company, Schittofer, Valmond, Penti, 250 each, so that the muster file, rotten and sound, upon my life amounts not to 15,000 pole. Half of the which dare not shake the snow from off their cassocks, lest they shake themselves to pieces. What shall be done to him? Nothing but let him have thanks. Demand of him my condition and what credit I have with the Duke. Well, that's it down. You shall demand of him whether one Captain Dumont be in the camp, a Frenchman, what his reputation is with the Duke, what his valor, honesty, and expertness in wars, or whether he thinks it were not possible with well-weighing sums of gold to corrupt him and to revolt. What say you to this? What, what do you know of it? I beseech you, let me answer to the particular of the integer... <coughs> Interrogatories. Yeah. Interrogatories. Interrogatories. Yeah. There you go. Demand them singularly. Singularly. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, you do know this K 
Captain Dumont. I know him. I was a botch apprentice in Paris, from whence he was whipped for getting the shrine's fool with child, a dumb innocent that could not say him a name. He's a, he's a lying about you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah, yeah, but I don't actually have a line. <laughs> yeah, but you get you get the hitting once. <laughs> Nay, by your leave, hold uh, hold your hands, though I know his brains are forward to the next pile that falls. Well, is this captain in the Duke of Florence's camp? Upon my knowledge, he is, and lousy. Nay, look not so calmly. We shall hear of your lordship enough. What is his reputation with the Duke? The Duke knows him for no other but a poor officer of mine, and writ to me this other day to turn him out of the hand. I think I have his letter in my pocket. <laughs> Mary will search. In good sadness, I know not. I do not know. Either it is there or it is upon the file which the Duke other letters in my tent. Here it is. Here's the paper. Shall I read it to you? I do not know if it be it or no. Our interpreter does it well. Excellent. Diane, the counts are full and full of gold. That's not the Duke's letter, sir. <laughs> Grab that That's quick. an advertisement to a proper maiden, Florence, one Diana, to take heed of the allurement of one Count Rossillon, the fool idle boy, but for all the very ruddish, I pray you, sir, Put it up again. Hey, I'll read it first, by your favor. By meaning in it, I protest, was very honest on the behalf of the maid, for I knew the young Count to be dangerous and lascivious boy, uh -oh. who is a whale to virginity, and devours a ball if its pride it finds. Damnable both sides rogue. Give him hell. <laughs> when he swears oaths, bid him drop gold and take it. After he scores, he never pays the score. Half one is match well made, and match and well make it. He ne'er pays after debts, take it before. And say a soldier, Diane told thee this. Men are to mell with, the boys are not to kiss. For account of this, the count's a fool, I know it, who pays before, but not when he does owe it. Thine as he vowed to thee in thine ear, Herodias. You shall be whipped through the army with this rhyme his forehead. This is your devoted friend, sir, the manifold linguist and the um, army potent soldier. Omnipotent. 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 Omnipotent arms. <laughs> I could endure anything before but a cat, and now he's a cat to me. I perceive, sir, by our general's looks, we shall be fain to hang you. My life, sir, in any case. Not that I am afraid to die, but that my offenses being many, I would repent out of the remainder of my nature. Let me live, sir, in a dungeon, in the stocks, or anywhere, so I may live. We'll see what may be done, so you confess freely. Therefore, once more to this Captain Dumain. You have answered to his reputation with the Duke and his valor. What is his honesty? He will steal, sir, an egg out of a cloister. For rapes and ravishments, he parallels Nessus. He professes not keeping of oaths. In breaking them, he is stronger than Hercules. He will lie, sir, with such volubility that you will think truth were a fool. Drunkenness is his best virtue. For he will be swine drunk, and in his sleep he does little harm, save to bedclothes about him. But they know his condition and lay him in straw. But I have but little more to say of Sir, of his honesty. He has everything that an honest man should not have. For an honest man should have, he has nothing. I begin to love him for this. For this description of thine honesty? <laughs> A pox upon him for me, he is more and more of a cat. What say to his expertness in war? Oh, faith, sir. He has led the drum before the English tra 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 tragedians. 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 There you go. 
is let the drum before the English tragedians. To belie him I will not, and more of his soldiership I know not, except that country he had the honor to be the officer at a place there called Mile End, to instruct for the doubling of files. I would do the man what honor I can, but of this I am not certain. He has outbellied and bellied him so far that the rest he resents him. A pox on him, he's a cat still. Yes. His qualities being at this poor price, I need not ask you if gold will corrupt him to revolt. Sir, uh, for a carduce. Cardicue. Cardicue. So for a carticue, he will sell the sim fee simple of his salvation, the inheritance of it, and cut the entail from all remainders for a perpetual succession for it perpetually. <laughs> What's his brother, the other captain to name? Why does he ask him and me? What is he? Even a cow at the same nest. Not altogether so great as the first in goodness, but greater a great deal in evil. He excels his brother for a coward, yet his brother is reputed one of the best that is. In the retreat he outruns any lackey. Mary, in coming, he has the cramp. If your life be saved, will you undertake to betray the Florentine? Aye, and the captain of his horse, Count Rossiglione. Well, I whispered with the general, and know his pleasure. I'll no more drumming, a plague on all drums, only to seem to deserve well, and to beguile the supposition of that lascivious young boy, the Count. I Have I run into this danger, yet who would have suspected an ambush where I was taken? There's no remedy, sir, but you must die. The General says that you have so traitorously discovered the secrets of your army, and made such pestiferous reports of men very nobly held can serve the world for no honest use. Therefore, you must die. <laughs> Come, headsman, off with his head. Oh, Lord, sir, <laughs> let me live, or let me see my death. That shall you, and take your leave of all your friends. Uh, there. So, look about you. Know you any here? Good morrow, noble captain. God bless you, Captain Parolins. God save you, noble captain. Captain, what greeting will you to my lord, Monsieur? I am for France. Good captain, will you give me a copy of the five you write to Diana and on behalf of the town of Oakland? And I were not a very coward, I compelled it of you, but farewell. You are undone, captain, all but your scarf that, is not, that has a knot on it yet. Who cannot be crushed with a plot? If you could find out a country where but women were that had received so much shame, you might begin an impudent nation. <laughs> Very well, sir. I am for France, too. We shall speak of you there. Yet I am thankful. If my heart were great, it would burst at this. <laughs> Captain, I'll be no more, but I will eat and drink and sleep as soft as a captain shall. Simply the thing I am shall make me live. Who knows himself a braggart? Let him for fear this, for it will come to pass that every braggart shall be found an ass. Rust sword, cool blushes, and paroles live, suffest in shame, being fooled by foolery thrive. There's place and means for every man alive. I'll after them. All right, scene four will skip, but what's happening is that Helen, Helena has uh, succeeded, and she is now pregnant with Bertram's child. Though he... Two? -hoo -hoo. two? And so, scene two. <clears throat> Good Master Lavache, give my Lord Lafeu this letter. I err now, sir been better known to you when I have held familiarity with fresher clothes. But I am now, sir, muddied in fortune's mood, and smell somewhat strong of her strong displeasure. Truly, fortune's displeasure must look it. If it smells so strongly, I 
as thou seest himself, I will henceforth eat no fish or fortune buttery. Pray thee, allow the wind. Nay, you need not stop her nose, sir. I spake but by a metaphor. Indeed, sir, if your metaphor stinks, I will stop my nose or against any man's metaphor creating get thee further. Pray you, sir, deliver me this paper. Fool, pretty, send away a paper from fortune close to to give a nobleman. Look here, he comes himself. Here is a poor of fortune, sir, of or a fortune cat, but not a mouse cat, that has fallen into the unclean fish pond of her displeasure, and as he says, is muddled withal. Pray you, the pray you, sir, we use the carp as you may, for he looks like a poor decayed, ingenious, foolish, rascally knave. I do pity his distress and my smiles of comfort and leave him to your lordship. My lord, I am a man whom fortune hath cruelly scratched. And what would you have me to do? Tis too late to bear her nails now. Wherein have you played the knave with fortune, that she should scratch you? Who of your, herself is a good lady, and would not have knaves thrive long under her? <laughs> well, there's a carnicue for you. And, uh, but the justices make you and fortune friends. I am for other business. I beseech your honor to hear me one single word. You beg a single penny more? Come, you shall have, and save your word. My name, my good lord, is Parolis. Oh, you beg more than one word, then? Oh, cox my passion. Give me your hand. How does your drum? <laughs> oh, my good lord, if you were the first that found me. Ah, was I in suit. And I was the first that lost thee. It lies in you, my lord, to bring me in some grace, for you did bring me out. Upon thee, out! And dost thou put me upon with the office of God and the devil? Oh, one brings thee in grace, and the other brings thee out. The king is coming. I know by his trumpets. Sirrah, inquire further after me. I had talked to you last night. Though you were a fool and a knave, you shall eat. Now go to. Follow. I praise God for you. <laughs> what good will that do you? Move right on. Your Lord, our esteem was made so poor a boy, but your son, huh? as mad and folly, lacks in the sense I know his estimation home. Her estimation. Oh, my honored lady, I have forgiven and forgotten all, though my revenges were high bent upon him, and I watched the time to shoot. This I must say, but first I beg my pardon. <laughs> this uh, the young lord did to his majesty, his mother, and his lady offense of mighty note, but to himself the greatest wrong of all, he lost a wife whose beauty did astonish the survey of uh, richest eyes, who, whose words were all ears took captive, and uh, hear, and dear perfection hearts that scorned to serve humbly called mistress. Praising what is lost makes the remembrance dear. Mm, yes. Well, call him either. Yep, 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 yep. We are reconciled, and the first view shall kill all repetition. Let him not ask our pardon. The nature of his great offense is dead. <gasps> and deeper than oblivion, we do bury the insensitive relics of it. Let him approach a uh, stranger, no offender, and inform him, so tis our will he should. Uh, I shall, my lord. Uh, what says he? Oh. What says? Ready? Yours? Yours. What's, what says he to your daughter? Have you spoken? 
all that he hath preference to your highness. Then shall we have a match. Uh -huh. I have letters sent me that sets him high in fame. Oh, he looks well, aunt. Oh, I am not a day of season, I have, for thou mayest see sunshine and hail in me at once. But to the brightest beams, uh, distracted clouds give way, so stand thou forth. The time is fair again. My high repented blames, dear sovereign, pardon to me. All is whole. Not one word more of the consumed time. Let us take the instant uh, of the forward top, for we are old, and on our quickest decrees, the inaudible and noiseless foot of time steals ere we can affect them. You remember the daughter of this lord? Admiringly, my liege, at ah. first I stuck my choice upon her, ere my heart durst make too bold herald of my tongue, where the impression of mine eye in fixing contempt his scornful perspective did lend me, which warped the line of every other favor, scorned a fair color, or expressed it stolen, extended or contracted all proportions to a most hideous object. Thence it came that she, whom all men praised, and whom myself, since I have lost, have loved, was in mine eye the dust that did offend it. Well, excuse that thou didst love her strikes some scores away from the great count, but uh, love that comes too late, but that love comes like a remorseful pardon, slowly carried. To the great center turns a dour offense, crying, that's good, that's gone. Our rash faults make trivial price of serious things we have. Not knowing them until we know their grave. Oft our displeasures to our fellows unjust destroy our friends, and after weep their dust. Our own love waking cries to see what's done, while shameful hate sleeps out the afternoon. Be this sweet Helen Snell, and now forget her. Send forth your amorous token for fair maudlin. The main consents I had, and here we'll stay to see our widower's second marriage day. Which better than the first? I think oh, that's a countess. Yes. Oh, which better than the first? Oh, dear heaven bless. Or ere they meet in me, oh, nature cease. Ah, come on, my son, in whom my house's name must be digested. Give a favor from you. Uh, to sparkle in the spirits of my daughter, that she may quickly come to... Oh. Oh. Uh, by my old beard and every hair that's on it, Helen, that's dead, was a sweet creature, and such a ring as this, the last heir I took her leave at court, I saw upon her finger. Hers it was not. Now, pray you let me see it, for mine eye, while I was speaking oft, was fastened to, to it. This ring was mine, and when I gave it to Helen, I begged her, if her fortunes ever stood the necessities to help, that by this token I would relieve her. Had you that craft to reave her of what should stead her most? My gracious sovereign, however it pleases you to take it so, the ring was never hers. Son of my life, I have seen her wear it. She reckoned it was at her life's rate. I am sure I saw her wear it. You were deceived, my lord. She no, never no, 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 saw no. it. In Florence was it from a casement thrown me, wrapped in a paper, which contained the name of, of her that threw it. Noble she was, and... Thought I stood engaged, but when I had subscribed to mine own fortune and informed her fully, I could not answer in that course of honor, as she may had made the disclose the overture, she ceased in heavy satisfaction and would never receive the ring again. Ah, Plutus himself, that knows the tint and multiplying of medicine, hath not in nature's mystery more science than I have in this ring. Twas mine, twas Helen's, whoever gave it you. Then, if you know that you are well acquainted with yourself, 
confessed was hers, and by what rough enforcement you got it from her. She called the saints to surety that she would never put it from her finger unless she gave it to yourself in bed, where you have never come or set it us upon her great disaster. She never saw it. Ah, thou speaks it falsely, as I love mine honor, and makes conjectural fears to come unto me, into me which I would fain shut out if it should prove that thou art so inhuman, will not prove so, uh, yet, and yet I know not. Thou didst hate her deadly, uh, and she is dead, which is nothing but to close her eyes uh, myself, would, 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 me to, would me to believe more than to see this ring. Take him away. My forefast proofs, however, the matter fall, shall tax the fears of this little vanity having vainly feared too little. Away with him! We'll suit this matter further. If you shall prove this ring was ever hers, you shall as easy prove that I husband into her bed in Florence, oh. where she never was. Oh. Oh. Get up. Get up. I am wrapped <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, Gracious sovereign, whether I have been to blame or no, I know not. Here's a petition from a Florentine who hath for four or five removes come short to tender it herself. I undertook it, vanquished thereto by the fair grace and speech of the poor suppliant, who by this I know is here attending. Her business looks in her with an important visage, and she told me in a sweet verbal brief it did concern your highness with herself. Take it back uh, to that uh, small part. Oh, upon sorry. On his many protestations to marry me when his wife was this. dead, I blush to say it, he won me. Now is the Count Rosilion a widower. His views are forfeited to me and my honors paid to him. He stole from Florence, taking no leave, and I follow him to his country for justice. Grant it to me, O king. In it best lies, otherwise a seducer flourishes, and a poor maid is undone. Diana Capulet. I will buy me a son-in-law and a fair, and toll, for this I'll none of him. Uh, the heavens have fought well on thee, love you. <laughs> Go to bring forth this discovery. Seek these suitors. Go speedily and bring them again, bring again the Yes, count. yes. I am afeard the life of Helen, lady was foully snatched. No justice on the doers. No. Well, I wonder, sir, Sith lives are monsters to you, and that you fly them as you swear them lordship, yet you decide to marry. What woman's that? I am, my lord, of Florence and derived from the ancient chocolate. My suit, as I do understand, you know, and therefore know how far I may be seated. Such a question. Why are you women, sir? Did you have to? His age and honor both separate under his complaint we bring, and both shall cease without your remedy. Come hither, Count. Do you know these women? My lord, I neither can nor will deny but that I know them. And do they charge me further? Why do you look so strange upon your wife? She's none of mine, my lord. If you shall marry, you give away this head, and that is mine. You give away heaven's vows, and those are mine. You give away myself, which is no mine, for I by vow am so embodied yours, that she which marries you must marry me, either both or none. Your reputation comes too short for my daughter. You're no husband for her. My lord, this is a yes, fond and desperate creature whom sometime I've laughed with. Let your highness lay a more noble thought upon mine honor than for to think that I would sink it here. Oh. Who's got by? Where? King? Sorry, I got lost. Where am I? Sir, for my thoughts. Oh, sir, for my thoughts, thank you. 
Thank you, my lord. Uh, 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 so, <laughs> whatever you want. Thank you, my lord. Uh, you have them ill to friend uh, till your deeds gain them. There are prove your honor than in my thoughts it lies. Good, my lord. Ask him upon his oath if he does think he has not my virginity. What sayest thou to her? She's a villain, my lord, and was a common gainster to the camp. Oh. She does me wrong, my lord. If I were so, he might have brought me at a common price. La, but la, do la. not believe him, O oh, behold his name, whose high respectability shall live in his lack of power, yet for all that he gave it to a commoner or the camp, if I be one. He blushes, and tis his. Of six preceding ancestors, that gem, conferred by testament to the sequent issue, hath it been owed and worn. This is his wife. That brings a thousand proofs. What well, methought you said you saw when you had caught, but what is it? I did, my lord, but no M to produce so bad an instrument is named self power. Left you. Left you. Who? Who? Ah, I saw the man today, if man he is. Find him and bring him hither. Aha. What, what of him? He's quoted for a most perfidious slave, with all the spots of the world taxed and debauched, whose nature sickens but to speak the truth. <laughs> Am I or that or this or what he'll utter or what that will speak anything? She had that ring of yours. I think she has. Certain it is I liked her and uh -huh. ordered her the uh -huh. wanton way of youth. Uh -huh. <laughs> she knew her distance and did angle for me, and madding my eagerness with her restraint, as all impediments and fancies cause are motives for more fancy, and in fine, her infinite cunning with her modern grace subdued me to her rate. She got the ring. And I had that which any inferior might at, at market price might have bought. I must be patient. You that have turned off the first so noble wife may justly diet me. I pray you yet, since you let virtue, I will lose a husband. Send for your ring, I will return it home, and give me mine again. I have not. What ring was yours, I pray you? Sir, much like the same upon your finger. Know you this ring? This ring was his of late. And this was it I gave him, being in the bed. The story then goes false. You threw it him out of a casement. I have spoke the truth. My lord, I do confess the ring was hers. Oops. You boggle shrewdly. Every feather starts you. Is this the man you speak of? Hey, my lord. Aye. Well, tell me, sir. Well, tell me true, I charge you, not fearing the displeasure of your master, which on your last proceeding I'll keep off, by him and by this woman here, what know you? So, please, your majesty, my master hath been an honorable gentleman. Tricks he hath in it, which gentlemen have. Come, 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 to the purpose. Did he love this woman? Faith, sir, he did love her. But how? How, I pray you. He did love her, sir, as a gentleman loves a woman. Well, how is that? He loved her, sir, and loved her not. <laughs> no, 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 knave and no knave. What an unequivocal companion is this. I am a poor man, and at your majesty's command, He's a good drum, my lord, uh, but a naughty orator. Uh. Do you know his promising man? Ah, yes, well, Barolas, where was he? Oh, yes, so please, your majesty, I did go between them, as I said, but what? more than that, he loved her. What? For He's indeed, he was yeah. mad for her, and yeah. talked of Satan. Yeah. and of limbo, and of furies, and I know not what. Yet I was in that credit with them at the time that I knew of their going to bed, and of other motions, Ooh. as promising her marriage, and things which would derive me ill to will speak of. 
Therefore, I will speak not of what I know. Thou hast spoken all already. <laughs> Unless thou canst say that they are married. But thou art too fine in thy evidence. Therefore, stand aside. This ring, you say, was yours? Only my dear Lord. And where did you buy it? Or who gave it you? It was not given me, nor did I not buy it. Well, who lent it to you? It was not lent me either. Where did you find it then? I found it not. If it were yours by none of all these ways, how could you give it to him? I never gave it him. Oh, this woman is an easy club, my lord. She goes off and on at pleasure. <laughs> this ring was mine. I gave it to his first wife. Yes. It might be yours or hers, for aught I know. Take her away. I do not like her now. No. <laughs> to prison with her. No. And away with him. No. Uh, unless thou tellst me where thou hadst this ring, thou diest within this hour. I will never tell you. Take her away. I'll put it in bail, my lady. I think thee now some common customer. Huh. I do, if ever I knew man to a few. Wherefore hast thou accused him all this while? Because he's guilty, and he's not guilty. He knows I'm no maid, and he will swear to it. I will swear I'm a maid, and he knows it not. Great king, I'm no strumpet by my life. I'm either mate or else his old man's wife. Me! <laughs> she does abuse our ears. To present with her. Hey. Good mother, fetch my veil. Stay royal, sir. The jeweler that owes the ring is sent for. Give it to him. Good mother, the jeweler that owes the ring is sent for. And he shall swear to me for, um, but for this lord, who has abused me as he knows himself. Though yet he never harmed me, here I quit him. He knows himself my bed he has defiled, and that, and at that time he got his wife with child. Dead though she be, she fills her young one's kick. So there's my riddle, one that's dead is quick, and now behold a me. Here comes Helena. Oh boy, here she is. Yeah. King. Yeah, I'm sorry, I thought you were going to say something more. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, but then, uh, is there no exorcist because the true office of mine eyes is real that I see? No, my good Lord. Tis but the shadow of a wife you see, the name and not the thing. Oh, bo bo pardon. <laughs> oh, my good Lord, when I was like this maid, I found you from this time. There is your name. And look, you, here's your letter. This it says, when from my finger you can get the done, will you be mine, now that you are doubly one? If she, my liege, can make me know this clearly, I'll love her dearly, ever, ever dearly. If it appear not plain and prove untrue, deadly divorce step between me and you. Oh, my dear mother. Do I see you living? Mine eyes smell onions. I will weep anon. Good Tom Don, <laughs> lend me his handkerchief. And so I thank ye. Wait upon me home. I'll make sport with ye, yet thy courtesies alone. They are scurvy ones. Uh, let us from this point to point the story know. To make the even truth and the pleasure flow. If thou beest yet a fresh uncropped flower, choose thou thy husband, and I'll pay thy dower. <coughs> For I can guess that thou, by thy honest aid, thou kept'st a boy for self, thyself a maid. Of that and all the progress more and less, resolvedly more leisure shall express. And yet seems well, all yet seems well, and if it ends so meet, the bitter past more welcome is the sweets. <laughs> Want to read the epilogue? Oh, the king's a beggar now, the play is done. All is well intended if this suit be won. That you express content, which we will pay with our strife to please you day exceeding day. Thou ours by your patience then, and your, your yours our parts. Your gentle hands lend us and take our hearts.
Yeah.